Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Sheena Howard, founder of Power Your Research, and I want you to enjoy the top five ways you can turn media coverage into income. This is the Power Your Research Holiday Marathon. I hope you enjoy. So we're going to use an acronym called PAIDS, P-A-I-D-S. And this is not my acronym. This is an acronym from a kind of world famous uh, uh, brand guy named Rory. You can look him up. Um, He has a brand company and I discovered him on the Lewis Howes podcast. It's a great podcast um, about, you know, being your best self, but they do talk a lot about branding. And so Rory, the brand guy, uh, uses this acronym called PAIDS. And I think it's great. And as you're building your brand, you may experiment with all five of these until you narrow it down to the one or two ways to monetize that work for you. So the P in PAIDS, P-A-I-D-S, is physical products. You can monetize your brand by selling physical products. You know, for a lot of my academics and educators, this looks like books. But, you know, just because you have a PhD or a master's degree doesn't mean the only thing you can sell is books. There's lots of different types of physical products that you could be selling. Maybe maybe you created a shake. Maybe you created a vitamin. Maybe you want to go into creating shoes. Whatever it is, one of the easiest ways to monetize your brand is to sell a physical product. Now, with all of these, you know, I want you to understand that you make money by helping people. You can show how your physical product is going to help someone solve their problem. Um, Then you can sell people on that thing. You know who your target market is if you're solving a specific target market problem. So the P in paid is physical products. What physical products do you have that you can sell? The A in paid is ads and affiliates. Ads and affiliates. So this works best if you are good at getting people to follow you. You are you you have a large number of followers on social media or this is great for those of my friends that have a podcast or want to do a podcast as a part of their monetization of their brand. And so ads are just when, you know, advertisers pay you um, you know, to get an ad on your show. Uh, or or you post something to your account. So for example, um, I have a gig on Fiverr. Fiverr is a, is a marketplace where I will take people's comics, like the comic books that you're, they're creating, and I'll post them on my social media accounts and they will pay me to run that ad. Um, so are you known for something? Do you have a space um, in, in, in the market where people will pay you to post their content? Is that a way that you can charge people so that you can make income and you can help people get their stuff in front of other people? The other A in paid is affiliates. So you may notice when you're reading blogs and things, people talk about affiliate links. That means, let's say you're watching this video and I have a, an affiliate link at the top. And it's like, you know, if you click this link and you buy, I don't know, this razor from the, you know, a a razor to shave, right? And you click that link from my website and you, you buy that razor, I get a percent from that, that company, right? So again, affiliate links um, pay you when people click and buy something and um, you can get organizations to, uh, to, to, to give you links that you can then post on your different blogs or on your videos where people click them and you will get paid. Uh, and there's lots of ways that you can do that. There, this, there are lots of websites out there where the companies are already there. You just sign up for the site and they'll give you the affiliate links and you can make money that way. Again, the A in paid work, works best when you already have followers, followers that trust you because they'll click the link um, and, um, you know, they'll buy the, 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 the things based on the link that they click, right? If you have a mailing list, you can put affiliate links in your mailing list. 
The I in PAIDs is informational products. So this might be something like a digital course, teaching people how to do something in a digital course. I did a video, I think last week, on the difference between the, the digital course platforms to host your courses, uh, Udemy and Teachable. So you might create a digital course and teach people something, right? When they take your course, what are you helping them to do? You're giving them information. Membership sites are informational products. So uh, I use something called patreon.com. It is a membership site where um, people who really like me can pay me every month to be a part of my membership membership site and they get special perks. They get special access to me. Um, the D in paid is deals. So contracts that you sign where you're getting deals. So like a book deal. Okay. So when you sign a contract for a book, you, you, you know, you, you write the book and that's a, that's a book deal. Um, people paying for the creation of a piece of art is a, is a deal, right? You're signing a deal and someone is paying you for those things. I happen, um, this, this is where currently I make the most of my income is book deals because I'm a writer. I write fiction, nonfiction. I write for organizations. I write for influencers, influencers, celebrities. And so I get, um, lucrative book deals, but depending on your brand and what you're trying to monetize and the thing that is most accessible for you to monetize, you know, one of these areas might be easier for you to monetize. And these areas can change as your brand builds. Um, I, I am thinking about next year doing away with my digital courses. I have some digital courses on, you know, how to write comic books. So the, the, the informational products, I'm thinking about doing away with them because I want to focus more on the, the deals that I'm getting in far, in, 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 as far as the book deals. And then the S in paid is services, services you can offer. So the problem with services is that you get paid when you put the time in to do the service. And so while this is probably the most accessible thing for you to do right now, right? A lot of my educators and academics have done consulting in some way, shape or form. You're providing a service and you're gonna go do that service and you're gonna invoice and get paid for that service. And that might be something really easy for you to do right now to monetize, right? And to, to get new clients. But eventually you're going to start thinking about, well, how can I scale this service? Because, you know, um, if you're doing consulting, you know, you only can take on but so many consulting gigs at once because it's just you. And so this might be a place where you, you get good at services, providing the service, and then you hire people so that you can take on um, so that you can make more money. So those are the five ways that you can think about monetizing your brand. And as you, as you do the, the, the brand building work that I teach in power, your research. Hi, Carlisle. I see your comment. Um, very nice to see you. Carlisle has been putting in the work in the power your research program. Love to see you here getting this additional information to um, increase your visibility, authority, and income. Now, for right now, with this information that I just gave you, you can go ahead and experiment with, with monetizing some of these. And then you'll get to the point where, you know, it's time to scale up. It's time to hire a coach. It's time to get somebody who has done the things I'm trying to do to help me get to the next level. The last thing I want to say is you can't do these things on your own. You need help. You need a coach. You possibly need a team or a virtual assistant. So while you may be able to get started on your own, really digging into what your brand stands for, who you want to show up as, all that foundational work is super important for you to even figure out who the target audience of your brand and your products um, will be. So Hope this helps someone out there. Keep fighting the good fight. You do not need to be living paycheck to paycheck as someone with a master's degree or PhD. It's time for you to own your academic credentials. The tools are out there for you. You just need the roadmap to do it. The title of this is Personal Academic Brand 
versus business brand building. So the first thing that I teach people in Power Your Research, I teach academics is for, and this, depending on what perspective someone is coming from, this could be, this could be different advice. But for me, I teach building your personal brand first so that you can build a community and build a following and then Whatever businesses you create going forward or whatever businesses you have now, you can funnel people to those businesses so that you can get sales and increase your income. But for me, um, I focus on building my personal brand so that now I can come here and talk to you about Power Your Research and I have authority and credibility because you know that I can teach you how to get media um, media coverage, visibility, amplify your platform, increase your income. Because if you Google me, my personal brand shows that I have receipts, right? That I'm doing the things that I'm teaching you. And so Power Your Research um, is just about teaching you those systems so that you can do it yourself. And so I say all that to say that you should build your personal brand and you could do it at, at the same time that you're building a business, especially for tenured professors who are looking for something else to do, right? How can you reach more people? Um, build up your personal brand first, funnel people to the different businesses that you have, whether it's coaching, consulting, whatever it is. So, so I'm going to teach you um, uh, something that was honed down for me yesterday in a, uh, a call with my creative coach around building your community. Now, of course, if you look at the previous videos that I've done, there are lots of things that you need to, to know and implement and be intentional about um, before you actually kind of implement some of the things I'm going to teach you. But these are good building blocks in the nine step system that you learn in Power Your Research. So First of all, audience and community are two different things, right? So if you get media coverage or you do a speaking engagement, you're talking to an audience. It's kind of like a one directional thing. It's kind of like when you're in your class doing a lecture, you have an audience. But the difference between an audience and a community is that when you have a community, everybody's exchanging ideas. So they're learning from you, but they're also sharing your ideas. You're creating, think like a membership site. You're creating a community um, around the thing that you care about, around your brand. So you can learn from your community, um, but you also can teach your community a little bit, a um, little bit of a different thought process if we're just thinking about, hey, I'm up here giving a speaking engagement and I'm talking to an audience. So you want to create a community and here's how you do it. Here's six things that you need to be thinking about to create a community because if you have a community, they want to spend money on the things that you're selling, whether if that's a book, consulting, coaching, whatever it is, and you can grow your community if you're thinking about a community mindset. So I'm going to try to go through these quickly. So one, you need to know who your tribe or community is. Who are the people that you want to reach? Who are the people that's going to care about your research, um, your research or your area of expertise? So let's use me for an example. Um, I would call my community multi-hyphenate writers. Okay, multi-hyphenate writers. Those are people that have an interest in writing across different mediums, or they're currently writing across different mediums, right? Um, or they have creative aspirations that dabble into different mediums. Now, you might be thinking, well, what does this have to do with your research area of expertise? Well, my research area, um, my dissertation was on comics. And I did work on media representations of people of color and women in the media. And so from there, I grew into a person who writes comics, creative fiction, that kind of thing. So my personal brand is focusing on multi-hyphenate writers. Now, you need to understand what's your community called. So you have to get a name for them. Now you know who you want to reach. What does your community do? So what, what do they engage in? What do they like to do? So for me, I know the people that follow me like to publish books. They want to know how to sell more books. They want to know the difference between publishing with a publisher and self-publishing self-publishing books. They they do things like maybe write poetry. They go to writers groups. They do things like, you know, go to cafes and, and sit in the cafes or the co-working spaces and write. So those are the types of things that multi-hyphenate writers do. Then the third thing is, what things do they say, right? So this is where you really have to know your audience. So my audience might say things like, 
multi-hyphenate writer or my audience might say things like netflix and chill right because a lot of times writers are engaged with watching movies and things like that so they can become better at their craft so number four is what places do they spend their time at where do they spend their time at what physical spaces or online spaces do they spend their time at so for me i know that um my community might spend time at definitely spends time at comic cons whether they're in person or virtual i know that people that follow me might go to stage plays they go to plays they go to things like that they go to the movie theater right they're probably geographically in new york or los angeles or philadelphia but not necessarily but they go to those places to hone their craft or to be around other writers on the online space they might spend time in comics related facebook groups writing writing facebook groups face facebook groups related to how to get an agent and things like that number five what what is my audience's core principles okay what do they care about so the people that follow me in my community for the most part i can say that they want to make an impact through storytelling, whatever medium that might look like for them and whatever type of writing they do, they want to learn how to make more impact through the stories that they write. That is a principle. It's something that's very important to them. And then number six, what's a symbol that represents them? Every great brand has a symbol, right? Google, Apple, whatever it is, you know the recognizable symbol. I know if somebody has an Apple uh, laptop, it says something about that person, right? So the symbol that might represent my community is a pen because I am focused on people who express themselves primarily through writing. So when I know my audience that intimately, I can do a lot of things with that information. One, I can target the people um, uh, that I need to target right um and speak directly to them i can create more digital courses for them i know what social media content i should be creating for them and i can create a community in which we're all exchanging ideas um and then from there you know what your business model should be because you know your audience intimately so again when you're when you're building your personal academic brand six things what's the name of your tribe or community what things do they like? What things do they say? Um, where do they spend time at? What places? What are their core principles? And what's a symbol that represents them? Shout out to my creative coach at Rec Philly for reminding me to hone down on these things so I can bring it to the academics um, and teach you. Today I'm going to talk briefly about um, how academics can turn media coverage into income. So um, a lot of times as professors who are expert, experts in certain areas, um, you know, the media, newspapers, um, you know, opinion sites might reach out to you and get an expert quote or opinion. Um, if, you're, if you're working with me and doing academic branding, you might be getting high level media placements um, like ABC, NPR, or what have you. And one of the things that I don't see enough academics doing is understanding how to turn media coverage into additional income. So research shows that um, if you create an academic brand, you can increase the money that you're bringing in by 20 to 25 percent and more um, if you're doing things correctly. So uh, for most of us, if we get media coverage, um, you know, we're not turning that into in any identifiable additional income. So uh, one of the things that you're going to want to think about as an academic who wants to be an influencer and a thought leader and be out there speaking about the thing that you're an expert in is how to convert that into income. So real quick, it's like anything else um, in terms of running a business, you need some sort of business model. Now, the great thing is you already have the tools to, in, in, to increase your income and turn media coverage into income. And you just need to understand what we call a sales funnel, which is the steps that people take after seeing you in that media placement to become some sort of customer. Now, you might be sitting here thinking, well, I don't really have anything to sell, but you do, right? When people see you uh, in the media, 
Uh, they might want you to do a speaking engagement. They might want you to do some consulting around the thing that uh, they know you're an expert in, whatever the thing is that you were talking about in this media placement. So there's lots of things that you could be selling that might not be obvious okay. to you today, but if you want to create a consistent system in um, turning your visibility into income, you need to be intentional about creating your sales funnel, which again, is just the steps that people take to becoming a customer. And that just involves with engaging with the people that you're getting in front of using the existing tools, most of which are free, to stay top of mind with the people that are interested in the thing that you're an expert in. And so that when the time is right, they become your customer that is booking a speaking engagement with you doing consulting engaging with a business a side hustle that you might have so um, a sales funnel can look like a lot of different things but a really quick example is a sales funnel where say um you know someone sees you in a media placement they click your byline because your website is um, under your name, underneath that uh, that media outlet or media placement. Once they get to your website, they see that you have some services or things to sell that they may be interested in. They click on that, and then you have a contact page that says, contact me for consulting, right? So now they're reaching out to you. You have an opportunity to talk to them and turn them into a customer. Now, that's one type of sales funnel, and sales funnels can get more aggressive and intentional than that if you want to spend money um, amplifying your sales funnel. Now, a lot of things that people looking at this video might miss are the things you can be doing to be intentional about your sales funnel, which looks like creating a mailing list. So I like to use MailChimp.com. Um, they have a free version of it. It's very simple. So this might look like a sales funnel um, in which your mailing list is involved might look like this. You do a speaking engagement, whether it's virtual or in person, and you provide people with a way to uh, their email addresses with you so if you're doing speaking engagement right at the end of the speaking engagement you might say hey if you want to learn more about this click this link to enter into my mailing list that's a very simple way doesn't feel salesy and you're collecting email addresses of people who are who like you they like you they're already at your talk they're interested in hearing more from you now once they're on your mailing list you're going to be sending out content to them. Maybe it's more valuable content based on the thing that you talked about. Maybe you're letting them know about an upcoming book, but now they're in your sales funnel. You have direct access to them and you know that they already like you because they showed up at this speaking engagement. And then you can sell directly to them and turn them into customers. And you can turn them into customers long-term. Maybe you don't have anything to sell right now. Maybe you just wanna give them free information around your area of expertise, but maybe six months from now you created a digital course and you've been giving them all this value over this time on your email list, now they're ready to buy from you. All right, so sometimes there's a little delay in uh, there. So you're in the right place if you're a tenured professor that wants to package what you do or research into information that reaches the masses. You're in the right place if you're not consistently earning 3,500 or more per speaking engagement, workshop, or whatever it is that you do um, to earn income outside of um, just, just your academic responsibilities. So maybe you do consulting or those things. If you're not consistently earning 3,500 or more, you're in the right place. And if you're not getting consistent high level media placement opportunities, you're in the right place. And by high level, we mean any of your dream platforms that you wanna that you want to be on. Um, and you know, the major players, uh, NPR, BBC, PBS, uh, those types of things. If you're not getting those consistently and you want that sort of visibility uh, for your brand, you're in the right place. So, um, I'm having a little delay. There we go. This is not for you 
If you already consistently make 7,000 or more per speaking engagement, workshop, or consulting um, gig that you do. This is also not for you if you already have a large social media following that you're successfully monetizing, right? So um, really the purpose of social media is to engage with your community and the people that you're writing and researching about and um, to get them to consume, you know, the books and all of the things that you offer. Uh, and if you, if you already have a, a large social media following, you're verified on different platforms and you're monetizing that following, then this probably isn't uh, the right place for you to be. This is probably not the right master class for you to be in. This is also not for you if you plan on watching this entire free strategy presentation and then you're upset when I give you an opportunity to invest in yourself. Um, and build that massive audience, uh, build equity in the unique personal academic brand that I'm going to talk to you about creating today and become a well-known public scholar. So I like to let you know up front that I'm going to give you the st strategy guide to um, academic branding and increasing your media coverage visibility and income, but I am going to be talking to you about the Power Your Research program um, so that you can invest in yourself um, to go from point A to point B. So here's my promise to you, okay? I'm going to give you as much value as humanly possible in this 45 minute to an hour strategy presentation. Uh, I promise that nothing I teach will be based on theory. So everything that I teach you here today about academic branding, um, they're tried and true proven strategies that work. They've worked for me and they've worked for the many, many, many clients that I've worked with in the past. And then finally, my promise to you today is that I'm going to give you a straightforward system that you can implement as soon as possible, right? You can implement it today and get started with leaving that impact and influence um, that you're seeking, that you're seeking uh, to leave in the world and in your community. So in return, I just ask that you keep in mind that this is a proven system that works. Again, nothing that I'm going to be sharing with you is theory. It's not something that I've read and then and then put in, into this presentation. They're, they're, these are actually strategies and systems and advice um, that I've used and the many, many people that I work with uh, use. Uh, I ask that you take notes so that you can implement this stuff as soon as possible. Okay, so uh, get your get your your notepad out. And, and take notes and uh, stay until the end to get any questions that you may have answered. So here are some tips for watching this master class, okay? Uh, just go to a quiet place for an hour so you can get the full implementation strategy that I'm gonna talk about today and just give yourself that time, right? Go to a quiet room with your pen and your notepad uh, so that you can focus in on um, uh, the roadmap that I'm going to give you. Put your phone on silent, right? So put your phone on silent, no distractions, don't have any other tabs on your laptop open. And uh, stay for the entire strategy presentation. There's valuable information that I'm going to be giving you as an academic that's looking looking to maximize your, your research, your, your impact, uh, and, and really create the life of your dreams with academic branding and the, and, and the, 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 the things that we can do with it with an academic brand. So during this master class, here's what you're going to learn. You're going to learn three of the most important aspects in developing, growing, and monetizing your personal academic brand because um, I don't only teach academics how to develop and grow their personal academic brand. But I teach you how to go to the next step is once you have a fan, fan base, a following, you know what you're doing on social media, you're getting your research out to the communities that you're writing and talking about, you're able to translate your research into something that the masses can understand, well, the next part of that is to monetize and maximize the income potential from the branding that you do. And so I'll teach you my nine-step system to increase the visibility, authority, and income for tenured professors right here in this masterclass. And I'm happy to do that for you since you are spending uh, one hour with me. I want to give you as much value as possible. 
So, uh, like I said, there is going to be uh, an opportunity to roll to enroll in the Power Your Research program. And for those that do enroll in the program, you'll get some fast action bonuses. And those are going to include lifetime access to the Power Your Research intensive program, which we'll talk about towards the end of this presentation. You'll get a 14-day refund guarantee. So you enroll in the program, and for any reason you uh, want your money back, 14-day refund guarantee. Uh, and you also get a step-by-step -step quick start academic branding ebook um, for those that do decide to enroll in the Power Your Research. Um, I, it goes by two names, the Power Your Research Intensive Program or the Power Your Research Signature Program. So if you hear me talk, um, uh, if you hear, hear me mention both of those, I'm talking about the, 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 the same thing. So, uh, so those are the fast action bonuses that you'll get towards the end of the program if you do decide to enroll. So I just want you to visualize for me a second something that is really, really, really common in this era that we're, we're living in right now. So you see on uh, my screen, it says the academic book of the future. So uh, some of us have books that we've written. Some of us have research uh, papers and articles that we've published. And uh, imagine you wrote this amazing book right this amazing academic book or this amazing research article that you're so 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 proud of but someone who is more savvy at marketing and social media than you is taking snippets of your work or parts of your work or your research findings and they're writing self-help books or they're doing interviews on CNN and NPR right and they're just translating your research for a mass audience and they're making money off of that because they're getting media coverage and visibility and they're gaining authority in their field. But they're using your work or parts of your work. And so up, up there on the top, you see uh, hands with money. So they're monetizing and making money and building their brand. And you're left at the bottom wondering, you know, why, you know, I'm looking at this interview on CNN and I could be talking about this, right? That's my field. Or you're hearing someone that's supposed to be an expert in the field and they're giving totally wrong information on YouTube videos that have millions and millions of followers or, or popular news programs that have millions and millions of viewers, right? So this happens to academics all of the time and I'm sure that you found yourself in a situation when you're, where you're watching an interview or a program and you're like, man, I could be talking about that thing. That's my research, right? You open up any self-help book today and all these writers are doing is taking academic research, translating it, it to, a, to a nice story and then selling millions and millions and millions and millions of copies. And so one of the reasons why I created the, the Power Your Research platform is because uh, I want experts in the field to be the actual voice of, of the thing that they're expert in as opposed to just people who are savvy at marketing and social media. But I also uh, want academics to leave the impact that, that they want to leave and not just have their work stuck behind an academic paywall simply because they don't understand the systems of branding. And I want to teach you uh, some easy systems that you can implement as an academic to, to start getting those high-level media placements, visibility, and uh, the income that you deserve outside of uh, your income from your institution or university. Okay, so creating a brand strategy was the number one way I went from, uh, you know, an unknown scholar to a public scholar featured on any platform I wanted to be on and also tripling what I was charging for things like speaking engagements, things like writing forwards for other people's books, uh, things like workshops and the like. And so we're going to talk about creating that brand strategy here today. So, you know, if, if you don't know me, if, you, if you've enrolled in this master class and, and you haven't Googled me or done some background research on me or you don't know me, uh, my name is Dr. Sheena Howard and I'm the founder and CEO of Power Your Research. I'm also a full professor of communication. I'm in the Department of Communication, uh, Media and Journalism at Ryder University. So I am just like you. I'm, I'm still a full-time faculty member. I went on, on the tenure track. I got, you know, tenure and then full professor. And um, so now I'm in the next phase of sort of my academic 
career. Uh, I have a bachelor's of business administration in marketing and I also have a master's degree in graphic design as well as a PhD in rhetorical and intercultural communication. And so since I graduated um, grad school, uh, I have been getting media coverage and visibility over the last 10 years. I never wanted my work to only be for academics and only at academic conferences and in academic journals. I always knew that I wanted my work to leave a legacy, but also to impact the communities that I wanted to 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 impact impact and, and the communities I was researching and writing about. And so I've taken all of my systems over the last 10 years and put them in the Power Your Research program. And um, and I do, you know, strategy sessions and um, coaching uh, with academics just like you. Uh, and again, uh, I just wanted to remind you that if you have any, any questions, you know, you can submit them in the chat box. And at the end, I'll get to as many questions as I can. Um, so uh, just to give you a little snapshot of, you know, the media coverage and visibility that I've been getting over the last 10 years, I've been featured in the New York Times, the L.A. Times, BBC, ABC, NBC, PBS. I was on some uh, really popular like pop culture shows like The Breakfast Club and I've, I've been in The Washington Post. Any place that I wanted to appear in, I've appeared in and that drastically helped um, the reach of my research, right? We talk about um, impact scores and citations, right? When your articles are linked in all of these major um, outlets, you're getting more traction, more citations, and making more impact, not only in the academic world, but also in the world at large, especially if you're engaging in the practices that we're gonna talk about today, which is translating your academic research for a mass audience. Okay, so um, like I said, over the last several years, I've 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 documented and outlined these systems, and um, uh, in the Power Your Research program, I I send you emails and screenshots and everything um, that I do to um, to get to get that visibility and to become authority in the field that I research in. So so my research is in. Uh, race, gender, and sexual orientation representation um, in the media. And that's just a picture of me on a, um, I was in a Comcast on demand film a few years ago, and that's just a picture of me uh, in the film. And so, uh, yeah, I, I outline all my systems, methods, and steps for you. I take you step by step in the program and show you exactly how you can get from point A to point B, which is the, the media coverage and visibility that you want um, and beyond uh, in the program. So you can build a brand that has reach, impact, and visibility and you don't need any special connections. I didn't have any any special connections, right? I don't have parents that are in, uh, you know, the media world. Uh, I, I didn't have a built-in network. I didn't go to Ivy League. I graduated from Howard University with my PhD. I did my master's at the New York Institute of Technology, and I did my undergraduate degree at Iona College. So I didn't have a major media department from an Ivy League uh, pushing media coverage my way way and amplifying my voice. Um, so you don't need any of those things, right? You don't need a major media department. You don't need to be at a large, uh, well-known school. And you certainly don't need to spend money on things like agents, publicists, or managers. And uh, a lot of people think I have an agent because I get high, uh, high profile people to write forwards to my academic books. So my book, Encyclopedia of Black Comics, uh, Henry Louis Gates wrote the forward for that. Uh, for my most recent book, Why Wakanda Matters, uh, What Black Panther Reveals About Psychology, Identity, and Communication. I had the forward written by the costume um, concept uh, artist for the actual film Black Panther and um, I, I do all these things without spending money on an agent, agent, publicist or manager. It's just these systems that I'm going to be teaching you that are tried and true that anyone can implement um, if they want. So where am I now? So so right now I do high paid speaking engagements. You know, as academics, people like to 
pay us an honorarium of like $1,000 or $500 or even $2,000. And I don't do speaking engagements for honorarium, honorariums, and I don't teach uh, people like you to do speaking engagements for honorariums. We want to get paid. I'm talking about $3,500 um, for a speaking engagement, $5,000, $7,000, $10,000. What you can charge is really, is really to infinity and beyond because the more you build your brand, right, the more you can charge. And your brand today is all online and it's all perception and you have uh, control over what your online presence looks like with a few simple techniques um, around branding and specifically um, specifically academic branding, uh, which we're going to talk about. So um, I have a brand that's even more profitable than my job as a full-time professor. So uh, not only are not only um, do I teach you how to build a brand for yourself, but that brand doesn't belong to any institution or university. So the brand that you create, when we're talking about branding, the brand that you create for yourself has nothing to do with the place that you work. I could leave my job right now and I would still have my brand that um, I can monetize and scale to infinity. That's why I'm able to come on here and do uh, sessions like this and coaching coaching ses sessions, helping other academics brand and monetize. Um, and I'm impacting lives, right? My work has been featured in so many places. I've done speaking engagements across the world and... Um, you know, my, my, my research, my actual research articles have been mentioned in major media um, outlets, and I'm reaching all of the community that I care about, that I, that I research, that I study, um, and that I've been writing about for the last 10 years. And, and it's a great feeling, and anybody can get there. We, we, I, I want to get you to the point where you don't need your job. You can stay at your university, or you're making so much money from the brand that you've created and eventually doing things like coaching and consulting if that's what you want to do. You don't, you don't even have to do that to, to monetize your brand. Um, but you have the agency to say, I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to uh, monetize my brand full time. You can, you can do that. And it's a great feeling, especially as higher ed education is unstable. Uh, you know, people are leaving, students are leaving universities um, in leaps and bounds. And one, you want to be able to differentiate your differentiate yourself from the other academics that are researching what you're researching. Uh, make yourself more marketable on the job market, right, by having this visibility. But also build equity in your brand and protect your future financially. And it's no greater feeling than the feeling of not being, not relying on on an institution for your for for all of your income. Um, so most importantly, uh, building a personal academic brand um, means it doesn't matter what happens in higher education. You still have income coming in. There's no cap on how much money you can make. Right, your academic brand belongs to you, and you can monetize it um, as far and wide as you as you want to. The more you build your brand and your online perception and streamline your social media, uh, the more you can charge. Um, when you have a brand, you're not undervaluing yourself, right? So you're not doing speaking engagements for $500. You're not doing free speaking engagements, right? So we, t we talk about um, you're not doing free speaking engagements, right? You, a lot of times we do free speaking engagements, and we'll get into this a little later because we feel like we don't have enough experience or we haven't done many in the past, but you have academic credentials, and so you already have the experience, right? And so uh, creating your brand, we, we teach you not to undervalue yourself and to protect your future by building equity in your brand, right? So there are three massive mistakes that you want to avoid in uh, media coverage, visibility, and increasing your income. And you're going to want to write this stuff down because now we're really getting into the strategy pieces uh, uh, that are going to be important to creating an academic brand that you that you're going to want to implement um, uh, when we get off when we get off the session. So mistake number one is wasting money on a publicist. And I talk to clients all the time. They say, you know, they hired a coach or a publicist, right, or or even an agent. And 
some of you have already Googled what publicists cost. And some of you, unfortunately, have already spent the money on a publicist for a couple of months. But we're talking about $4,000, $5,000 a month. And what a publicist is going to do is they're going to ask you, hey, what platforms do you want to be on? And then they're going to go and try to land you on those platforms. And you're going to get very little success, and it's going to take them a very long time. Because a publicist doesn't understand the life and the world of an academic. They don't understand the psychology of an academic. And more importantly, they're going to try to land you these media placements, but they're not going to help you with brand, uh, brand building. And the reason why I can... Um, get on really any media platform I want to get on is because when you Google my name, I have a brand and I can position myself for the outlets that I want to be on. And every person wants to be on different outlets. We all have industry specific podcasts that we listen to, right? News and blogs that we listen to. And so you're branding yourself for those specific outlet, uh, uh, outlets, your research area or area of expertise or the thing that you want to be known for. And then I'm teaching you how to pitch to those places by making yourself relevant, timely, and newsworthy. And that's something that a publicist simply can't do for you because they don't know the specific of an academic, right? They don't know that it's so hard for an academic to even talk with their colleagues about wanting media coverage and visibility and those sorts of things. And they're very, very expensive for very little results. And so the impact of hiring a publicist and making that mistake is that you're going to spend a lot of money, you're going to get little to no results, and um, nothing that they talk to you about or help you about is going to be industry specific to higher education and the world of academe. And why do academics do this? Well, we want to leave an impact with our work. We want our work to reach more people, right? We want to be thought leaders and public intellectuals. We're scared to say that, right, sometimes to our colleagues, but that's what we want, right? We want to leave a legacy. Um, we have something important to say. We don't know where to start, right? And so logically, the first place that we might start is researching publicists and managers and agents. But those are not the things that you that you should be doing. And I'm not av advocating completely against a publicist. I don't use one. And I teach you in the program that there there are very specific times that you can hire a publicist, but nine times out of 10, you don't need to. But the method that I teach you, let's say there's a high level show you wanna get on, I don't know, um, let's say CNN, okay? And you've already done the brand work that I'm gonna teach you how to do. And you already have the producer's email address because I teach you how to get those things in the program. And now you're ready to pitch the producer for whatever show it is you want to go on on CNN. In that case, you might want to get a publicist, but here's the difference. You're telling the publicist, hey, I've already created, created a brand. I already have a social media following. I already have the email address of the producer. All I need you to do is send the email, right? Because you want to look um, like, like you have an intermediate there, right? That would cost you way less than hiring a publicist for $6,000 for three for three months, right? In that case, you only have to pay the publicist probably like $1,000 because they have one job to do and they already have the information that they need. So I'm not advocating completely against a publicist, but I don't use one. And um, as you're going to see, you don't need one. And when you look at my background and all the places that I've been on, I haven't used a publicist for those things. Um, and I'm going to teach you how to do that as well. Um, and academics do this because there's not many services out there like this Power Your Research program that is specifically for academics. I believe that we have important research. We have the expertise. Our articles have been peer reviewed and, sh and we should be the voices of the thing that we're expert on, not people that are simply better at social media than us. This is very important in the era that we are in. Um, and the people that are better at social media, unfortunately, are the, are the people that are, have had the microphone. And, and I want to change that and I want to help you change that as well. So the cost of, of hiring a publicist is you're going to waste time and money, so you're going to lose valuable time all the time you're waiting for the publicist to do something. You're going to get little results, right? So you're wasting the time, the money, the energy, um, and you're not going to have any brand building. And that's going to cost you because you're not able to build equity in a brand that you don't have, right? So if you, if you, land, on, if you land a high level interview on say I don't know NPR but you don't have the brand well when people start googling googling you and looking you up they have nowhere to go they have no books to buy they have no no beautiful website to 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 go to they have they 
right? A, a brand is not only media coverage, but sending the people that you're speaking to and that you're helping different places, right, within your world. So whether it's your, your mailing list, your website, whatever it is, all of those things are brand building, right? Getting your Twitter followers, your Instagram followers, all of those things. And don't worry, you're a busy academic. The, the strategies that I teach you are strategies for the busy academic because I know sometimes we're busy, sometimes we're not. We have semesters and quarters and sometimes we have more time and sometimes we don't. I'm a professor, I know, right? I know. And so um, we, we work we work through that with, with, um, with, with your schedule. So the solution is that you can save time and money, you can land high level media placements that are specific to your community or area, and you can use a proven system that's easily executed and proven um, by uh, joining us in the Power Year Research uh, intensive program. So uh, here's one of, of my past clients, Dr. Allison Whitehouse. She joined the program in, in a very, very short time, a couple of months. She landed an interview on NPR. She was doing all of these um, fabulous high-level uh, media placements. And she says, as an academic, this program taught me how to think like an entrepreneur. So, so I am teaching you something totally different than thinking like an academic. I'm teaching you how to think like an entrepreneur, right? And more so like a creative entrepreneur. And I love uh, working with academics because a lot of us have like these creative backgrounds and uh, you're trying to figure out how to fuse your love of like poetry or dance. Like I have one woman in the program right now. Um, she's in psychology, but she's she she also used to be a dancer and she wants to fuse, you know, movement therapy and psychology all into one. And the beautiful thing about creating your brand is you can be intentional and your brand can be all encompassing of um, your creative work, but also your academic credentials. Mistake number two. Um, doing low paid speaking engagements, workshops or consulting or even doing free uh, speaking engagements, workshops and the like. OK, and um, this looks like doing free speaking engagements. I'm getting paid an honorarium. Right. We talked about that. Um, I'm not teaching you to get an honorarium. I'm teaching you to get paid. Right. Nobody should be spending more to get to the venue to speak than what than getting paid for the actual uh, speaking engagement. Um, so there's no value added in a devaluing network. And what this means is when you do a free speaking engagement or you do a, a speaking engagement for $500 or $1,000, you get into what I call the devaluing network. Because now um, this institution is telling another institution, yeah, she or he, you know, did the speaking engagement for $500, right? It was so cheap. You should, you should email him or her to come speak at your institution. And now you're in this network of people who know how much you charge for the previous speaking engagement that you did. And they're offering you the same little bit of money that you got before. And listen, I give you a criteria for when you should do speaking engagements, right? I have a criteria um, of five things. And if someone asks me to do a free speaking engagement, if it doesn't meet all five of those criteria, then I have to say no. And I also have a cap on how many speaking engagements I do per year. And so I'll help you um, figure out your five point criteria for when you should and shouldn't be doing speaking engagements. Usually you shouldn't. Um, one or two a year is fine, but you need to have your criteria written out and if it meets all five of those criteria, it's okay to do that free speaking engagement. Like some of my criteria are, um, uh, is, is, is this a nonprofit? Are people that are coming to this event coming for free, right? So if it's an event that and people are paying to actually attend, I'm not doing the speaking engagement for free because they're paying. So the speaker should, be, should get paid. Um, so I have five criteria like that that, um, that I teach you in the Power Your Research program. Okay, so why do academics do this? As academics, uh, you know, I, I work with a lot of um, women tenured professors, um, and women particularly tend to think that I need more experience, I need to do more free this and free that. No, you don't. 
you already have the credentials and now your job is to turn those credentials into cash. Your job is not to continue to suffer from um, what we call imposter syndrome. You already have enough to charge um, what you deserve to be getting paid for speaking engagements, workshops, consulting, um, writing forwards to books, whatever it is. Um, academics do this because they're secretly hoping for some added benefit. You know, I had one client tell me, she said, uh, oh, but it's Duke University that's asking me to speak. And they were they were going to pay her um, $500. And I said, right, it's Duke University. And they should be paying you more than $500, right? And so um, don't do free speaking engagements or low speaking engage, low paid um, gigs secretly hoping to get more benefit because you won't. Um, academics are, quite frankly, we're scared to ask for more. But once you ask for more, you get used to asking for more and then you have a baseline of what you're willing um, to trade your time and money for, right? Because uh, doing, doing a speaking engagement or whatever it is involves your time. And also the, the saddest thing is we do this because we don't have any comparison or benchmark from our peers, right? We don't talk to our peers about how much we're charging for things. Um, money is something that unfortunately in our culture is scary to talk about. We don't share, right? Um, and so we have no benchmark for comparison, right? I was, I was at, a, at an academic conference the other day and um, someone was talking about um, these workshops that they do. And I asked him, and I particularly like to ask men, I said, oh, how much did you charge for that 40, 45 minute workshop? And he told me. And so that gives you a nice comparison because let's say, let's say you get a book deal and someone gets a $7,000 advance and you get a $500,000 advance from the same publisher. Now, if you talk to that person that got the $7,000 advance, instead of feeling bad that you didn't get $7,000, that helps you because next time you go to publish a book, you know to ask for $7,000. But unfortunately in our world, um, we have no, no really point of comparison because we can't talk about these things with our peers. And that's where the Power Your Research community comes in because the Power Your Research program is not just a program. There's a Facebook community as well where those are the types of things that we talk about and those are the types of things that I uh, share with you. So this is costing you, right? Getting, doing things for honorariums or uh, free or low paid, it's costing you time, money, and most importantly, it's costing your credibility because you're getting into that devaluing network. Where I'm, te I'm teaching you how to build equity in your brand, not devalue your brand. So it's, like, it's, like, it's like when you have a house, right? If the front steps have like are falling apart, right? You're, you, the, the house is depreciating, right? But if you're keeping everything up and nice and of high value, right? Well, then you can, you can get more when you go to sell the house. And so um, branding is about um, keeping your credibility and, and building equity in that credibility in that brand. So what happens when you stop making this mistake? Well, you start double or even tripling your income as I have been able to do and, and, and as I um, uh, teach my clients. You grow a respected brand and reputation. Um, you get subsequent high paid offers. So instead of being in the devaluing network, you're in a network that is valuing your time and what you're bringing to the table. And beautifully, you're getting a boost to your confidence, right? The more you start demanding more and the more you start actually getting paid more and building that brand and getting comfortable on social media and you're creating easy systems that don't feel overwhelming, you're getting more and more and more confident with turning your academic credentials into cash and creating a life where your paycheck is not solely derived from the institution or university that you work at, right? Um, so I work with a, uh, a professor in the Power Your Research program who's not tenured yet. And as I said before, you know, I do uh, non-tenured uh, faculty can enter the program. It's just, you know, I care about people and I care about people's careers. And I would never want to sell a program to a non-tenured professor that focuses on media coverage and visibility at the expense 
of uh, uh, spending time on their research and the activities that they need to do to to get tenure. Um, um, and so if you feel like you can do both, certainly I have non-tenure professors in the program, but, uh, but uh, Tiffany, amazing, she's doing wonderfully in the program. Uh, the other day, she doubled the, the the rate of her speaking engagement just by having um, a session with me. She sent me this wonderful email. Thanks so much for your insight and for boosting me to new heights. Working with you has been so great. And funny story about Tiffany, she went through my program and she started implementing the systems around um, pitching and landing high-level media placements. And you may or may not know this, but your media department at your university, even even small universities do this. You know, they keep trackers on um, the hits that your profile is getting on their website. So, you know, we all have our profile with our name and our department. Um, and so she started getting uh, media coverage media coverage, and, and media placements. And the media department at her university reached out to her and said, Tiffany, like, all of a sudden, like, people are visiting your profile page. Like, what's going on? And she told them, like, I've been doing this program and, and getting all this media coverage. And now the cool thing is her media department is helping to push her out as well simply because she started getting the media coverage uh, on her own and she started getting hits to her profile on, on the university's website. And so um, once you start getting media coverage and building your brand, I tell you to work with your media department at your university to create a vehicle to push behind you and it becomes a really amazing thing um, but then the next level to that is once you start getting consistent high-level media coverage and visibility we talk about taking your university's name off of the um, op-eds and um, you know your title when you when you appear on high-level television shows and stuff like that but we talk about that as you build and go through the program and start getting the media placements Mistake number three, not using social media. So unfortunately, a lot of us are um, allowing social media to use us and we're not using social media. And for academics, we're busy. We don't really want to take the time to engage with social media. I actually teach a really easy system called the three H's. Um, and it's a system to engage in social media and build your brand. And it's for the busy academic and it's really simple if you go to my Instagram or Twitter page and scroll through you can see my engaging content but it's just a formula that I'm using you that I teach you in the power your research program but what does it look like um, what, what does this this unfortunate use of social media look like for the academic if you have a small number of followers if you're posting random pictures or links or posts and if you have sporadic posting so if you go to your Twitter account right now or your LinkedIn page or your uh, Instagram page, and it's sporadic, there's no continuity in what you're posting, um, th then we're gonna help you streamline your social media and engage in the social media strategy called the three H's. Um, and, you know, using social media does not involve posting your feelings or opinions about t the issues of today. No, social media is a tool for your business, for your brand. And in this case, you are the business, right? Um, your personal academic brand is the business. And so uh, for me, you know, my brand statement is I create experiences for free thinkers to feel empowered when they're challenging the status quo. Now, every time I say that brand statement, I get goosebumps. It's unique to me. No one else can use my brand statement. In the Power Your Research program, we give you your own unique brand statement and it's a beautiful amazing thing and the reason why i'm talking about that here is because through that lens of my brand statement that determines the types of things that i post on my social media and so um everything that i post on my social media revolves around these three words smart inspiring and fearless and so we my brand statement and those three words that describe my brand is how I'm able to easily post content through that lens. And we give you your three words and your brand statement to help you post on social media through that lens. So academics don't use social media because they don't know what to post, right? So I just gave you an example to, to um, uh, in which to help you know what to post and through what lens to post, but we're also too busy, right? We say, oh, we're too busy for social media. That's why I teach the 3H strategy. 
Um, we don't understand that social media is a tool to be used. It's not something that should be using us. And once you understand that social media is a tool to be used, one, it takes the stress out of posting because you're not posting about today's latest uh, catastrophe that happened in the world. You're posting through the lens of your brand because you have a community that you want to help. You have people that you want to reach and you have important information that you want to share. So not using social media, not streamlining it, right? If all of your, your social media names are not the same, all of your social media names should be the same. Well, it's costing you. It's costing you high paid speaking opportunities, high level media placements, and reaching a massive audience. So we need to fix that. Um, when you stop doing this, you will fix your online perception. This is called branding. You'll streamline your brand and reach. You'll use an easy 3H system that any academic can do with little time and effort. Listen, I'm a single mom, right? I'm a full-time professor. I'm a part-time entrepreneur. I have the power of your research business plus another business. And I use this 3H system and it takes me mere minutes to do. So if I could do it, you can do it. Um, Dr. Myra Gooden, she's been on C-SPAN, she's been on Fox News, she's been everywhere. She went through the Power Your Research program and she said, it feels it fills a gap that existed for those hoping to use the media to share their work. So she was able to go through the Power Your Research program and actually understand the systems to landing consistent media coverage and visibility. So the nine step framework to increased visibility authority and income um, is it, it's it's in three phases so there's phase one phase two phase three and each phase has three steps right and so it's a nine step system okay so phase one is the build phase we're building your brand right we're creating your um, uh, brand statement, right? Remember I said my brand statement was that I create experiences for free thinkers to feel empowered when they're challenging the status quo. That powerful brand statement, it tells you who I am, it tells you who I help, it tells you why I do it, and it tells you when I want to help the people that I want to help, right? Um, we talk about your mindset, right? Because a lot of us have, um, feelings around self-promotion that don't feel good. And so we talk about self-promotion is not about you. It's about the people that you're trying to help, right? And so we reframe your mindset in the phase one. And we also create your personalized vision and goals, right? Like I said before, the place that you want to be, the outlets that you want to be on, the thing that you want to be known for, it's individual. It's different for everybody, right? Getting on the show The Breakfast Club was really important to me, but some of you might not even know what The Breakfast Club is because we all have very industry-specific um, places we want to be. Some people want to do a TED Talk. Some people don't. Um, which in the program, I teach you the five-step system to land a TED Talk. I can I can get you in front of um, on a TED stage in five steps, but you have to build the brand first. So we talk about your personalized goals in, in the first phase. We get your brand statement. We get your mindset right. We work in the Facebook community to help you get comfortable talking about yourself. And uh, the outcome is that you get from point A to point, point B very quickly, right? Having a brand statement helps you understand what to say yes and no to right when you have a brand statement and you know where you're going you know what opportunities to say no to and what opportunities to say yes to which actually gives you more time to get to point b faster um and uh it helps you build your brand because you're solid uh and so you know for me uh you know a couple of months ago i got asked to write a book uh they were going to pay me forty thousand dollars but it was actually writing a book for someone else $40,000 is a lot of money, hard to say no to. But I just told you what my brand statement was and me spending a year writing a book for HarperCollins for someone else, that doesn't fit into my brand statement because I could spend a year writing my own book and um, impacting the group and the people that I wanna impact. So um, sometimes as academics, we say yes to everything because we don't have any direction. But when you have a brand statement and you know where you're going, you have direction. So academics don't do this because, you know, it takes too long when we don't have a system. Um, you know, it's hard when you don't have guidance. 
And a lot of us need accountability. And in the Power Your Research program, you get one-on-one coaching with me throughout the program to hold you accountable. Now, I, I don't believe in accountability partners. I believe accountability is about you being accountable. But in the program, you do get six coaching calls with me. So as you go through the program, every couple of modules, you're working and meeting and talking with me one-on-one. So as you're implementing and executing the things that I'm teaching you, I'll guide guide you through the process and you know when you know you have a coaching call coming up it kind of kicks us in the butt and uh gets us getting uh, gets us to, to 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 catch up okay so this is caitlin haas she's now an academic coach but she used to be a professor she left ac- academe after successfully monetizing her academic coaching um career and she went through the program and she said this isn't one of those courses where someone proclaims to be an expert and they aren't Sheena has excelled at sharing her research publicly and shares all of her knowledge with you in a really accessible, friendly way. And uh, Caitlin was a wonderful person to come through the program and is now doing very, very, very well. Phase two is the engage phase. So after you build your brand, you know where you're going. Uh, we teach you easy pitching strategies. Is it is it relevant? Is it timely? Is it newsworthy? We start getting you those high level media placements. We give you a list of a hundred podcasts that are specific to your industry, specific to the thing you said you wanted to be known on. We teach you how to start pitching. I'm um, in a very particular way. Um, engaging looks like helping you connect with producers and journalists and editors who are responsible for getting you the news coverage and visibility. Um, And we have um, experts audit your website or we give you resources resources to create your website so you can generate that traffic and income um, when we get to the monetizing stage. Uh, So the benefits are you have impact, right? Once once you're starting to engage, you're making impact, you're leaving a legacy, uh, you're building a fan base. Um, your work is no longer behind an academic paywall because you're successfully translating it for the masses. We talk about a, uh, a repackage and repurpose strategy that I use. So one article publication could easily be five different outlets to repurpose and repackage for the masses. Um, and you're gaining authority and credibility, right? Uh, and then that's when the right people know that you know what you know. And that is when financial opportunities flow, right? It's not enough to just have the PhD and to be doing the research because you're because then the right people don't know you know what you know. You need to connect with those outside of the academic world. Um, and academics don't do this because, quite frankly, we're bad at marketing and self-promotion, as we discussed. Um, we can't talk about this with our peers for the most part. We don't have the right mindset, and we don't have the tools or systems until we come through a program like Power Your Research and learn them. Uh, this is Alicia Roebuck. She went through the program. She did so well in the first couple of uh, months. She ended up, she she started out with never doing uh, uh, media coverage or landing media placements. First couple months she was, she had a, a mention in the New York Post. Uh, so, you know, media coverage is mentions or quotes from you. They're, they're feature articles about you. Um, those are the, the media placements that uh, that are typical, right? Do, does someone pull an expert quote from you and put it in the article? Is the whole article a feature uh, piece about you, right? Or are you the, the subject of an interview or something like that? So, uh, uh Alicia, like, it's just so much wonderful things to say about her because now she has a successful business um, because once you build your brand, you funnel people to things like your coaching or consulting services or whatever else it is that you want to do to monetize your physical books or digital products. So phase number three is to publicize and monetize. So eventually with uh, media coverage and visibility, you get to the point where it's like, yeah, I know I can land on NPR. Yeah, you know, I set my goals and I, and I was able to land media placements on all the places that I said I, I was. And so it becomes a thing where it's like, now what? The now what is you start monetizing the brand that you've created, building equity and protecting your future. And this is important because you literally can scale your branding and the monetization of your branding to infinity. You can go as far as you want. Um, you, of course, you can increase the rates that you're charging for things like speaking engagements. 
Um, you can expand your brand, right? It's always opportunities to expand and grow your brand to infinity. Um, and eventually you get to the place where you don't have to pitch anymore, right? You're not, once you implement the systems of uh, pitching and landing media coverage and visibility, when you get to the monetization phase, now your brand is out there. People are coming to you, right? You're turning down media coverage and visibility and you're focusing on monetizing and you don't have to pitch anymore. Like me, I'm teaching you the systems, but I don't have to pitch journalists and things anymore because people are coming to me to do consulting for documentaries and films and 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 coaching and all of that stuff because I've already done the work over the last 10 years that I've put in this program for you. Okay, so the benefits are like we said, you build equity in your brand, you protect your future, and you are that authority in your area of expertise, the things that you said you wanted to be known for. Okay, and academics don't do this because we just don't know how to build a brand. Um, we're wasting times on things that we should be saying no to, right? Uh, we don't have a vision. We're thinking like an academic and not like an entrepreneur, which I'll, which I'll teach you. And um, we're accomplishing goals, but not a life vision, right? Getting tenure is a goal. Becoming a dean is a goal. But those are not, not life visions. Life visions are thinking about what you want your life to look like. What do you want your days to look like? And will that look like freedom for you? And that's what we're teaching you in the Power Your Research program. That's a power of building a brand that an institution or an organization doesn't own. Okay, Dr. Annette Matlock came through my program. Uh, she, ha she had a couple of different businesses, plus she's an academic. And m like most people ask me, but I have so many things, how can I combine it into a brand statement? We worked her through that. We got her branded. We taught her a couple of tricks about um, owning your name. Uh, and she was off to the races. A wonderful time with, with, uh, with Annette. She had much success in the program. Um, so if you take one thing away today, I want you to know that you can land any media placement you want without the expense of a publicist with a tried and true strategy. I have developed a system to turn you into an academic that has authority, visibility, and increased income. And I've outlined that system here for you today. And so the big question is, will you apply this framework and make it work for you? So you can waste tons of money and time and effort trying to figure it out alone, or you can be a part of the Power Your Research community and have a guide through this program, right? You can fast track your results with the Power Your Research signature program. And here it is, the nine steps to increase visibility, authority, and income. This is the roadmap that I take you through, right? There's phase one, the build, phase two, the engage, Phase three, the publicize and monetize. And we've went through all of these steps today. And this is the transformation that you'll have when you join the Power Your Research program. And you'll work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout this process. Every couple of steps, you're scheduling your call with me. And we're meeting and we're executing and we're building that brand. We're building that freedom. So at this point... I am inviting you to a free 30-minute discovery call with me to talk about how we can take you through this process and take your career and your income to the next level. This is a very busy time for Power Your Research, and so I only work with a limited number of people, but I screen people on the free discovery call to make sure your goals align with the program. And so through that screening process, I'm able to work with a limited number of people to bring them into the program and take them through the roadmap at their own pace, right? You can be in the program for 90 days, um, or it can take you one year or two years. You have the program for life. But we want to make sure that we get people in the program that are ready to make this uh, next leap in their career. So go ahead and click on the link to schedule a free 30-minute call with me. And I look forward to meeting with you. And I look forward to working with some of you.